three, two, one. Howdy, howdy, this is Mr. Potter. Today we're going to be talking more about linear searching, and so I kind of want to talk about the world's worst telephone book, because there's this telephone book out there, I don't think you'd call it the Yellow Pages, you'd probably call it something like the Ekru Pages or something like that. But imagine you have this telephone book, and when you look at this telephone book, the first telephone number they have is 2210001. And then you have 2210002. And then you have 2210003. And besides each of these numbers, you have the name of the person. My goodness, this is going to be quite difficult to find my friend because I know I'm going to have to look here for his name and try and find out which number he has, but these are in phone number order, not by name order. And so that's gonna make it quite difficult for me to find what I'm looking for. Now, it's gonna be much easier if I start at the beginning though, because I'm going to look at the first telephone number that I see, which is 2210001, because telephone numbers can't start with a one or a zero, and used to be that the old area codes took up the zero or the one in the second digit. So two, two was our first telephone number and then the rest of the digits. And I'd say, yes, that's my friend's name or no, that's not my friend's name. And then I go to the next number, two, two, one, oh, 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 two. And I'd check this name and yes, it's my friend's name or no, it's not my friend's name. And I'd keep going until I find out, hey, Jenny's number is 867-5309. So I'm going to go through this process until I find my friend's number. Now, you know what? This will work because I'm going to hit one of two possibilities. The first possibility is I will find my friend's number. Because my friend's number is either in the book or it's not. And I'm going to reach the last number. without finding my friend's number. So yes, this will always work. And of course, you know, I, I, I'm trying to emphasize just how funky this always is because I essentially am going to have to go through every single phone number in the phone book looking by, for my friend's number. I have a best case scenario, maybe the first number that I find is my friend's number, and that's wonderful. But I also have this worst case scenario where I end up going through every phone number in the phone book directory without ever finding my friend's number. Now, what we're doing here is something called a linear search. And so what I've got here is the pseudocode. This is the pseudocode we talked about in our previous lesson, the type of code that the AP is going to expect us to know. And we can translate this to any computer language. But I want to kind of explain what's happening here. Um, I'm going to input some value. This is the thing that we're looking for, and I'm going to call it my target. And I'm going to start looking at spot zero. And I'm going to pretend that, you know what, I just haven't found it yet because I haven't started looking yet. And I want to repeat the following block of code until one of these two things happens. Either I found what I'm looking for, or my spot ends up being equal to the length of the list. Because if I have six things in my list, remember this is spot zero, this is spot one, this is spot two, spot three, four, and five. The thing is, if I ever try and look in spot six, there's a big wasteland out here because there's only six elements in my list and we start counting our indices at zero. So there are six elements in my list and they're numbered one through five. So as soon as spot gets up to this value, I know that it's not in my list. This is where I found it and I know exactly where they are. This is where my friend's number is nowhere in the book. So I'm gonna say, hey, if the spot that I'm looking for in my list, if this spot here, is my target, then I want to say, hey, this is it. I found the spot. It's in box one. And I set my found variable to true, which is going to break us out of this loop. If it's not in here, I still want to look at the next spot and say spot gets the value of spot plus one. So after I've looked in box one, now I want to look in box two. 
after I've looked in box two, now I want to look in box three. And I'm going to keep doing it until I found it, yay, or I didn't find it and I fell off the end of the list, which is boo. And then I've got this if statement down here where I say if it's not found, then I want to display not found. So one of two things will be showing up, either yay I found it or boo I did not find it. The yay I found it is if I find out that the target, the thing that I entered, is exactly the same as the list box one or box two or box whatever spot we're in. And we're going to eventually look at every spot in here. And if we run off the end of the map, then we're going to hit this boo, we didn't find what we were looking for. So I want to go through a couple of examples and talk about this from the pseudocode idea. So I'm going to start off with this, I want looking for a 12 in my list of numbers. And this is part one. So I'm going to start by saying, what am I looking for? I'm looking for a 12. And spot is zero, so that means I'm going to start looking at this spot found is false, and I'm going to repeat until I find it or the spot is equal to list.length. Now list.length, that's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so there are really six boxes here. And when I've gone through all six boxes, I know that I haven't found it. Is box 0 what I'm looking for? Remember, what I'm looking for is a 12. So is box 0 a 12? And the answer is no. So I'm going to say spot gets spot plus one. So now I'm looking at box one. And now I'm asking the question, is box one a 12? And the answer is no, it's not. So I jump down here, spot gets spot plus one, and now I'm looking at spot two. Is box two a 12? And the answer is no, it's not. So we're going to add one to it. So now we're looking at box three. And we're going to ask, is box three a 12? And if I look in box three, I find out, yes, yes it is. So I'm going to display a three because spot three is the box number that 12 was found in. And found gets true. So now this is true and this is going to kick us out of the list. Keep in mind that spot is still three. Three is not yet equal to six, so we would still be looking if we hadn't found it. And then I go down to this if statement, and if found is true, not found is false, and this code never gets run. So the only thing that's going to get shown on the screen is a three to let me know, hey, what I'm looking for is in box three. So this is one way that we could think about going through a linear search. Notice that I started at the beginning and if it wasn't in the first box, I went to box number one. If it wasn't in the second box, I went to box number two. And I kept going until I found exactly what I'm looking for and said, hey, it's in that box. But the question rises, what if what I'm looking for isn't in the list? So I have the exact same list here except 12 just isn't in the list. But I still want to search for 12. So I'm going to input a 12, so a 12 is going to be put in target. Spot is still 0, found is still false, and I want to repeat until found, which is currently false, spot is 0, and the length of my list is still 6. So in box 0, is box 0 the 12 that I'm looking for? And I'm looking at box 0, and no, it's not the 12 that I'm looking for. So I increment, and now we're looking at box 1. So now I say, okay, is box one what I'm looking for? Here's box one, is this a 12? No. So it's not what I'm looking for, I'm gonna increment again, and so I end up with box two. Okay. Is box two equal to 12? So I look at box two, and this is not a 12, so I'm going to increment again. And I'm gonna do it again. Look in box three, not a 12. Look in box 4, not a 12. Look in box 5, so at this point spot is 5. That's not a 12, I increment again. Now spot is 6. And 6 is equal to 6. This part is true. So I'm going to stop looking because it wasn't here and 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 it wasn't here. It's nowhere to be found in my list. So I've completed this block 
of code and we didn't find it. This is currently false, so not false would be true and we do run this code. So I'm going to see not found. So the idea behind this binary search is that I'm either going to keep looking until I find it or I'm going to keep looking until I run off the edge of the list, in which case I didn't find it. But either way, whether I found it or I didn't find it, I need to let the user know. And this display is the way that I'm going to let the user know. So looking at this, what is our best case? Our best case is that we found it the first time. In other words, it took one search. The worst case scenario is that I go through the entire list in other words, the length of the list, and didn't find it. Now, this is going to be a problem. I mean, if I'm just looking at a small town phone book, I may look through 2,000 or 3,000 telephone numbers. If I'm looking at a large city's phone book, I may be looking at 8 million or 9 million phone numbers. And the idea that I would have to go through the entire list to find out, you know what, my friend does not live in Los Angeles and it's his phone number is nowhere to be found in the Los Angeles telephone directory. I'd have to go through some 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 million telephone numbers to find that out. And that's a problem. So then the question arises, is there something better? Because telephone books have been around for over a hundred years and they're a pretty good system. The question is, what about them makes them such a good system? And we'll talk more about that next time. Once again, this is Mr. Potter. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.